So I don't want to be the person who just shows you the aesthetically pleasing part of their lives. I don't think I've ever flown to Milwaukee where I wasn't the most junior on a trip. I used to pick up Portland layovers just to come here. And then later, stay tuned as I'll be showing what it's really like to be a flight attendant. Like there's things that are missing in my life. If we haven't met before, I'm Allison, and I love to create a variety of content. I post a video each week, and sometimes I take you along on my layovers as a flight attendant, and other times stay closer to home as I cook up some comedy in the kitchen. Don't waste the sun is my motto, and I would love to have you all come along. So like and subscribe, hit that bell notification at the top of the page, and let's get to flying. Well, I'm at the airport, and we are heading on a trip. We are headed to Milwaukee today. I found this trip late last night in the box. Somebody was giving it away. So I grabbed it because it is worth nine for me. So a one day trip that's worth nine, that's like gold. What's weird is it normally is a very senior, like seniority based trip, but it was in the box last night with really like junior people on it. I've ever flown to Milwaukee where I wasn't the most junior on a trip. So this will be a first. I love Milwaukee. The people are so nice. And maybe we'll get off the plane and check out to see if they have some cheese. I don't know. All right, let's head in. hiding around the corner here but it was so cool because the company today they gave out salads and cookies for us employees so I walked over to the employee like lounge area and grabbed a salad and a cookie for today's flight because it is very long flight Milwaukee sits along the shores of Lake Michigan and it is a beautiful sight from the air. I love flying in and out of this city. They're well known for their cheese, but more recently, I just found out they are also well known for their beef and they will be hosting the World Beef Expo this next year. The airport is sweet and quaint, but we had to get back on our way to Seattle and get home. Thankfully, there was nothing going on in Milwaukee that day, but I got a really sweet trip out of the deal. up about an hour ago and I thought it would be fun today to take you to Ikea. So Ikea is really not that close to me. I actually used to pick up Portland layovers because that was easier. It was right across the street from our hotel. But I just love to look around and be inspired and just kind of like go into that fantasy world. Oh, it's kind of like the Disneyland of home decor. I did have lunch here. But I have to say I was not impressed. Lunch used to be a lot better and it used to be a lot cheaper. They had a little bit more of Oho style going on, which I'm kind of inspired by lately. I've always kind of leaned towards like a beach, modern, industrial type feel, but I've also been kind of interested in like simple boho. One theme that I did notice over and over was that they were using a lot of green. I saw the sun, which now I'm looking back and I realize it would have been cute because my motto is don't waste the sun, but Oh well, I've never really been into tchotchkes. Now I love the style of this next space. This little kitchen just reminded me of a kitchen in New York. I love these metal shelves. There's something about the industrial style that makes me feel like it's just a really clean space. Whenever I see a washer and dryer stacked like this, I just wonder, how they get up there. I don't even know if I could reach it with a footstool. One interesting fact about Ikea is that they actually assign a price to a piece of furniture before they build it. So they build it for that price point. And sometimes I find the price points at Ikea a little steep. One area of Ikea that I just love looking at is all of the bedding. I love seeing all the different duvet covers, the new patterns they have, and the new colors. My bedroom is one space that I'd like to spruce up a little bit, add a little color, incorporate some new patterns, but I just like to look around and then get ideas and then maybe come back in the future. 
I was really inspired by this area of Ikea. I've actually never seen this before. They have all of these new shelves. I'm thinking of getting one from my apartment. Before leaving, I always take a little spin in the garden department. I think Ikea is great for plants and planners. I did buy a few little things today. So in total, I spent $27 on my trip to Ikea and I ended up just buying a few of these pots. I think that Ikea has great prices on pots. I'm gonna make some popcorn. I think this is like the best thing that I've received in a long time. My sister actually gave this to me for Christmas. And so I'm gonna show you how it works. It's extremely easy. All you do is place some popcorn kernels into the top fill line of this lid. Place the kernels into the craft put the lid on and then you can also add a little butter to the top of the lid and then I place it in the microwave for about three to three and a half minutes. It kind of depends on your temperature setting and then you have a very nutritious snack in less than four minutes. I just love this. I've been to the top of Mount Everest. I've sailed the seven seas. I've shared the stage with all the best Lot of good it did for me I've walked the wall of China Walked till my feet were sore Came home to Carolina And found my love next door Well, why do you know? I didn't have to travel the world About this a lot. I don't want to be the person who just shows you the aesthetically pleasing part of their life. So I want you to see the chaos. Life is not always easy. It looks like I have my entire life together, you guys. I don't. Like there's things that are missing in my life. I don't have a spouse. I don't have kids. I don't have a family of my own. That's missing. And part of that is because of the type of situations I've been in in the past because I flew, I didn't have time to date. Those types of things you have to think about when you go into the aviation world, you're not going to have time for relationships like you would in a normal life. And at the time, that wasn't such a big deal because of where I was in my life. I was ready for an adventure. I wanted to go see the world. Then the world shut down and I was left realizing I hadn't built a home at home. Like it hits you at some point during this job that you don't have the same lifestyle as other people. And that's not something I ever aspired to have. I never thought I was the type of person that could get lonely. I am very lonely at times. Everybody in this industry has told me how they feel the same way. And while at first it's really exciting going to new cities, you soon realize that you're not sharing this experience with anyone and you're just dropping in for a very short period of time and the only reason why you're really there is just to really fly out again and then soon you're watching the world from above and you wonder what you're missing out on. Your circadian rhythm starts to get off. If you're flying on reserve, you don't know that you're gonna have to get up early. You don't know what time you're gonna be flying at. You don't know if you're gonna be flying in the afternoon. You don't know if you're gonna be flying at night. You just don't know those things. All of this uncertainty caused a lot of anxiety. I was in my late 30s and it was exhausting to not know where I was going and then just be like on this treadmill of constantly flying for like six days straight sometimes. And I don't tell you any of this to play the victim. I fully own every single decision I ever made, but I want you to be aware that we all have things in our lives where we look back and we realize what we've missed and then we have to grieve those situations. And that's actually the hardest part of life. It gets really intense because you're by yourself the whole time, like trying to get, find the vans, trying to find your hotel. You're not always with your crew members. You're not, you're just not, and, and you have to figure it out for yourself. And that's, that's the hardest part of flying is that you don't have a lot of support. And that can be a really lonely and isolating process. There are a lot of flight attendants that turn to alcohol because it's so easy and accessible and it's legal. And then that turns into depression and they just kind of spiral. There's even a term in the flight attendant world known as a slam clicker, which is a flight attendant who closes their hotel door and clicks open a bottle of wine and drinks alone. It's hard to know if the job works for you unless you try it. 
it just is. When I first started flying, the reserve life was only about two years. As the airline hires, you move up the list and you get better trips, better days. But when I was on reserve, it never got better. It just got harder. The airline went on a hiring freeze. People quit underneath me and that left me flying at the very bottom of the line. I think I had an inkling before I started that like I might not like that part of it. But I just kind of always thought, oh, that'll only be two years. It was more than two years for me. And once I got past the two year point, it wasn't getting any easier. And I was ready to quit every day. And I'm glad that I stayed with it. But it was the hardest battle I've ever fought. I, this is what I'm going through right now. I've seen people having so much fun. I'm seeing them like enjoy their travels, enjoy their families. And here's the really ironic part. People are also watching me travel. They see me off exploring new cities, sitting on the beach, but what they don't see are the sacrifices I've made and the dreams I've had to put aside to get here. And so I think it's really important that I share this with you because we can all get caught in the comparison trap from time to time. Earlier this year, I saw the dangers of social media when I posted this picture of myself in Times Square on New Year's Eve. And well, yes, I was there on New Year's Eve. What people didn't see was that this picture was taken in the very wee hours of December 31st. Suddenly, my phone had hundreds of notifications, and I soon realized everyone thought I was there for the ball drop. But the truth is, I was already sitting back at home on my couch alone before the confetti was even falling in New York that night. And so this is a good reminder that things are not always as they may appear. And we all are going through something. I just really hope you guys are on your own journey. Remember to play your own game. Over the past year, my airline began hiring flight attendants for the first time in three years. And I'm finally holding a line. And that means I know when and where I'm going. In training as a flight attendant, I had to learn how to evacuate a plane in 90 seconds with half of the exits blocked. I spent countless hours memorizing evacuation drills, practicing CPR, and I even learned how to fight fires. But no amount of training could have prepared me for the physical and emotional endurance test I was about to embark upon when I got my wings. I spent holidays alone in hotel rooms. I felt torn leaving on a trip knowing my dad was sick in the hospital. And more recently, I learned about the sudden death of a dear family friend while on the first day of a four-day trip. But I had to keep smiling and wait to get home to mourn this tragic loss. To say my time as a flight attendant has been turbulent is an understatement. And while I could easily tell you it's all been wonderful, I've loved every minute of it, and I've never considered quitting, that's simply not my story. If nothing else, I hope sharing my story sheds some light and brings awareness to what feels like a silent and shameful epidemic in the world of aviation. Sending huge hugs to my aviation friends. Know you're not alone.